number BD offers to the rest of the to the rest of the numbers at the point B, it will be in this direction, XL direction, correct? Because FBD is a two force number. See, there will be only forces <laughs> acting on these two two ends of the BD, so it's a two force number. So the force definitely is in the XL direction. Okay, so in the XL direction and then pointing inwards because the force is in tension, right? So the force, this FBD, uh, this member BD offers to the rest, rest of our objects are in this direction. Okay. So for member BA, okay, the first object in contact with it is FBD. So FBD offers it a force in this direction. So what are the other forces that acts on the B? Okay. BC, right? BC is in contact with BA. So definitely there will be force from BC to number BA at point B. Correct? So the force from number BC, from number BC, we don't know its direction yet. What's the direction? What's the direction from BC to member BA? It should be in XL direction as well, right? It is either this or this, but it should be in XL direction. Why? It's because BC, member BC is also a force, two force member, and it does not have any force in between the member and does not have any external power. Okay. So that's why the force should be in the XL direction of BC as well. Okay, so at point B, these are the two forces that this member BA experiences. Okay. This member BA have a force, <laughs> this have a force. Okay. What do you think of the force BD downward? Force BD. What do you think of the XO, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's like the rest of the object is trying to stretch the member BD, correct? So the force exerted by the rest of the object to this member BD is in this direction. In another way around, the force exerted by this member BD to the rest of the object is, should be in this direction. So that's why we get <coughs> Yeah, We must be very clear of this force is from which object to which object. For, uh, force from object A to object B is in one direction. Force from object B to object A is its reaction should be in another direction. Okay. So that's the physiology of Newton's third law. So now we have these two forces. What are the other forces that this member B A may experience? The forces from from A D right from maybe from the ground as well. But here we don't need to concern about it because we can just simply use the use the what? Use the um, use the <coughs> summation of force equals to zero at this point. Summation of moment equals to zero about this A. No matter what are the forces, what are the direction of forces at A, we don't care because we can just put A <coughs> as the point of analysis and uh, analyze the moment about this A. Okay. So there will be one force here, one force here. So the <coughs> moment created by this will equal to the moment created by this. Correct. So in the in the end, what we can have is Moment created by this force with respect to this point means the force times the force arm gives us the force times this force arm. Force arm means it's perpendicular. Okay. So in this way, because we know this force, we use the geometry, we can find this lens as well. Use the geometry, we, we know this lens as well. 
then we know three of them, we just left with this one, according to a summation of moment equals to zero. Yeah. So in the end, we can calculate what's the force from here. What's the force acting by BZ to this number BA? I explain again. First step, what we do, we look at the BA, we try to draw its free body diagram. Free body diagram which gives us a force acting in the axial direction of BD. Axial direction of BD. And then another force acting in the axis axial direction of BC, which is to this direction. Okay. And uh, the other forces at A, okay. maybe in this direction, maybe in another direction. So this is a free body diagram for, for number B, A, right? We have analyzed all kinds of forces already. So here is just the resultant force of, of the rest of our uh, members to point A. Yeah. Maybe from the AD itself, maybe from the ground as well. Yeah. So, in fact, we are not so interested in the in the in the, the direction and the magnitude of the force at this point. We just know that this force will be able to balance out balance out this uh, forces. Okay. So. We can what we can do okay two ways okay first way we just cover up uh, cover this point okay the forces here are, does not create any movement at all so the rest of the forces are just to create a movement which can balance out each other so that the, the, the this number can still maintain that equilibrium okay this is logic one this is one way of think think of it okay another way of thinking think of it. Because this member BA is a two force member as well, so the resultant force of these two will be in axial direction. Yeah. Which means, okay, this force have two components. Can we consider two components? The horizontal components of this one will cancel out with the horizontal components of this one, left out with only vertical components of this one, which is in the axial direction. Okay. This is another way of considering. And then both of way will give you the same result. Yeah. Okay. So this is a way of doing force analysis. Okay, so here, <laughs> since we know the magnitude of this one, of FBD, right? Then we could find out what is FBC over here. 